What's the word, y'all? I can't lie, I've been slacking. I feel like, personally, I'm in the dog days of the NBA, which don't even make sense because every single one of these games mattered, and we got like 10 games across the league for every single team, so everybody's fighting for standings. But it's, it feels like right now it's hard for me to come on here and watch a game and tell y'all about this game, and then the next day, everything I said about the previous game don't matter because the team looks dramatically different. I'm going to try my hardest to be more consistent, but here's a video that's an accumulation of a lot of different topics and ideas over the past week or so. We're going to talk about that after we talk about our sponsor, Price Picks. Hit the link in the description down to Price Picks app and use code Kenny because they're matching all deposits up to $100 for new players. Prize Picks is daily fantasy that is just you versus the numbers. You pick some of your favorite and or least favorite players. You pick something like points, rebounds, assists. You see the number and you decide if you think the player is going to have more or less than that number. Of course, we do basketball around here, but it's not just basketball. We got the big tournament because I don't know legally if I can say the name of the tournament. The big tournament is going on right now and you can make an entry about that. You can do League of Legends. There, there's a gap between college basketball, League of Legends, and every single sport in between that. It's probably on prize picks. So here's a fake entry I just made. I'm dealing with some of the March Madness games. I don't know none of these dudes. I don't. But I'm rooting for them because I want to see more and more and more. Hit the link in the description, download prize picks, and use code Kenny so they can match your deposit up to $100. Please play responsibly, man. All right, the first thing that's on my mind is the Golden State Warriors. It has been since January. Well, let me see my date. It is March 18th as of today, and they just lost to the Grizzlies. And the last game that they won on the road was January 30th. January 30th was the last time they won a game on the road. That is a mind-blowing statistic for any team, but specifically for a team that is trying to win a championship, specifically for a team that just won the championship last year. If you told me uh, a team was on an 11-game losing streak on the road, it, it, would, it would make sense for some teams like the Houston Rockets, uh, trying to get Victor Wembanyama. It will make sense for the San Antonio Spurs. It will make sense for the Detroit Pistons. Uh, no, th this is the Warriors. And after their loss today against the Memphis Grizzlies, they are now the worst road team in all of basketball. The worst road team in the entire association. It blows my mind. They are 29-7 and at the crib, and they're 7-29 and any place that's not the chase center. This is a team that is trying to win a championship. How can it be that they just can't win a road game? Now, the entirety of the NBA right now is struggling at the road. Even the best team in the league or the best team in the conference, the Denver Nuggets, are a sub-500 team on the road. The only team, <laughs> shout out to these boys, the only team that's a good road team out west is the Kings. They're nine games over 500 there. But, but no team is 7-29. Is the Spurs ain't 7-29 on the road, y'all. You know what I'm saying? Are there six and twenty-eight percentage-wise? Who's worse? It don't matter. If I, if I gotta do some mathematics to figure out if you're worse than the Spurs, then you're worse. You're worse than the Spurs. Just just off rip. And I keep getting tweets, and I don't even know if these from Warriors fans or just people uh, that care about my opinion. Thank you for that, by the way. Asking me why can't the Warriors win uh, on the road? And the answer to that is, I literally do not know. I've watched every single one of their games in the past two weeks. I want to say. And, and there's a combination of a lot of different things, but they're not like, it doesn't make sense for them to only come into play on the road. Again, they are 29 and seven at home, which is the third best home record in the Western Conference. And, and this seems in a plan and they got the third best home record. So some of the things that I'm watching, it, it doesn't make sense for this to, to basically be going for a month and a half, but it is. Now, I've heard some people that are intellectually up there when it comes to basketball, look at the numbers and look at the luck percentage, the adjusted luck, boom, 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 and the Warriors are on the road super unlucky. But even super unlucky go win one out of 11. You know what I'm saying? So it don't make sense. I watched this game against the, against the, um, the Memphis Grizzlies tonight. Just talking about this one. They look very small out there. Jaron Jackson Jr. had a great game, 30-plus points. He was stretching them out, and he was also putting the ball on the floor, guarded by Jonathan Kaminga, small ball lineups, and getting right to the basket, going over him. The game a couple days ago, Steph Curry had 50 of them things. Ridiculous performance. 50 of them things. Wasn't even a close game. He had to give them 50, and it wasn't close. And in today's game, where he didn't have it on completely, he wasn't the Steph Curry that he's been all season, they don't have a chance. If Steph is not Superman... They don't have a chance right now. So I'm talking to the homies because, you know, I be thinking about these things and sometimes I bounce out ideas off of them. Sometimes I bounce ideas off of y'all before I bring it to them. But I was asking them on the podcast, why should I give them the benefit of the doubt? Other than the fact that they just won last year. What about this team has redeeming factors enough for me to believe that they're a legit title contender? And I asked them, am I wild for thinking that? Am I wild for even having this conversation with myself? Because remember, this is... 
This is Steph Curry, Klay Thompson, Draymond Green, and, and throughout the history of them playing together, as long as they've been healthy, they've been a contending tight team. Again, they're elite at home, but like, I, there's not a lot of redeemable things while I'm looking at them versus some of the other teams that they're going to have to match up against. And I'm not even just talking about out west. Hypothetically, if they make it out of the west again, they still got one of the juggernauts out east that they got to be in the seven-game series again. So why should I believe this team that is tied or close to the worst road team in basketball can get it done in the playoffs? Because you're asking them, no matter what, right now they're the seventh seed, and the idea of them getting up to the fourth seed to get home court advantage, at least in the first round, don't seem likely. It is just three games. It is just three games. But you got to win on the road to make up those three games, you know what I'm saying? So regardless, if they make the playoffs, because it's not even a guarantee at this point, we're asking them to at least win one game on the road and basically be perfect in the home games they get every series. That is a lot to do. And, and even if they are Steph Curry, Draymond, Klay Thompson, one of the greatest trios we've seen ever, this is a lot. It just objectively is. And they don't want to be in the play-in, y'all. They were in the play-in two years ago, and they were the higher seed and lost two games and missed it completely. So being in the play-in for everybody, it's like, oh, we don't want to do that. But for the Warriors, uh, not, not so much. Now, you can say if you're Warriors for, hey, right now we're the seventh seed in the play-in, and that means we're going to be in the chase center. Right now we're money at the chase. But still, you don't want to be in this position. If they do win that first game, let's say they stay in the play and they win that first game, I, I, I mean, they, they're going to be on the road. Everybody's talking about the, oh, get the Kings in the playoffs. Everything's good. Get the Kings in the playoffs. Everything's going to be good. Bro, have we watched the same Kings team? Like, like, I know they don't have the experience that the Warriors do. The Warriors have four championships with that core, and uh, some years that they didn't win, they was in the finals. You know what I'm saying? They have a lot of experience with that core. And, and the, the Kings basically have nothing outside of Harrison Barnes. But are we watching this Kings team right now? I know their defense is lackluster at the moment, <laughs> but they score with the best of them. And they got one of the best home court advantages in basketball too. So like, it's, it's, I, I don't know how I can put the Warriors personally. You can call me crazy and I, I'll accept that. I don't know how I can personally put them in the upper echelon right now, especially considering the big elephant in the room when we talk about the Warriors is we don't know about it wins. I'm not even thinking about the rumors that's out there. I'm not even going to comment on it because I don't believe nothing until it's, it's factual. Will he come back this season? And if he doesn't, GG's. If he does, I mean, we just saw a whole playoff run last season where he was the second best player on this team, so he matters that much. But if he not hooping no more, I, I just can't look at them and say, oh, yeah, we should write them in as a title contender because I'm I just, I'm watching this team every night, and I just, I'm not seeing it, y'all. I'm just not seeing it. I mean, they're a 500 team at the moment. They're a 500 team. And again, majority of teams in basketball are about 500 right now, feels like, but like, I don't know, man. You let me know what you think about the Warriors. Am I tripping with that idea? I don't know. Next thing I want to talk about is Lonzo Ball. Um, give me a couple seconds to talk about my Bulls, who are now one and a half games above the Indiana Pacers for the 10th spot in the play-in, fighting for the, for the spot to lose to the Milwaukee Bucks in the playoffs again. Um, the Lonzo Ball stuff just makes me extremely sad, man. Um, and I'm not just saying that from the perspective as a Bulls fan. I'm saying that as an NBA lover. Because if you watch Lonzo Ball in the last season, you saw that he was taking those strides. Again, he wasn't going to be, uh, uh, who they call him, uh, Jason Kidd 2.0 or... What did Korzimba call Lonzo Ball? I got to go look it up. Why can't I find the video? Oh, Steph Curry with a 40-inch vertical. That's what he called him. Hey, that video banged though. 2.5 million views. Do you think, Korzimba? Um, he didn't turn into Steph Curry with a, with a 40-inch vertical or anything like that. Um, but he was he was starting to take strides for himself. You look at the numbers with him in the projected star lineup for the Bulls, uh, Lonzo Ball, Zach Levine, DeMar DeRozan, Patrick Williams, and Nikola Vucevic. They played five games together. They are 4-1. and one. They had a net rating of 9.6. It's a small sample size, but they were good. And with Lonzo Ball and Alex Caruso on the court together, they were they were causing havoc, and Lonzo was in the 98th percentile when it comes to catch and shoot threes. Like, a lot of things were going right for Lonzo Ball, and unfortunately, he has this injury, and now he's going in for his third surgery, and they're saying his career is in jeopardy. It is just overall a sad, sad ass story. And I'm going to say this right here, of course, I'm wishing him nothing but a, a, a healthy recovery. Uh, again, not even as a Bulls fan, but just as person to person. I just, I hate the idea of somebody's, somebody losing out on the thing that they love the most. And obviously as an NBA player, what he loves the most is the game of basketball. I can imagine uh, this YouTube stuff getting taken away from me while I just got to chill and not do it. Like this is my, what I'm passionate about. And now Alonzo Ball is going to have two, two, two full seasons, two and a half seasons 
where he won't be able to hoop. It just sucks. It just sucks. So um, get well soon, Zoe. But it got us, uh, me and the homie start talking about this article that we had saw. Um, and I think Baxter Holmes in 19, not 19, what am I talking about? In 2019, he wrote an article named These Kids Are Ticking Time Bombs, A Threat to Youth Basketball. And this was a, a story, a write-up about, well, not, man, not Julius Randall, but about AAU and the culture around it. And um, basically he's saying that, hey, these players be going into the NBA and they already got miles and miles and miles in their body because they're doing AAU tournaments on a weekly basis. And it's not just one game. Some of these AAU tournaments is like four games in a day. And, and they doing this all the time. And it feels like, and it feels like in, the, in a lot of cases, you need these tournaments to even make a name for yourself so people can know who you are. So even if you want to go the route of just chilling, I don't want to play five games this weekend, coach, you can't really do that and get your name out there at the same time. So these kids are coming in, their bodies are developing, they're putting all this, this, this uh, wear and tear in their body, they get to the league and, well, they already like in year four, the NBA career is a rookie because they got so much time on it. So um, I, I'm sure we're going to have an entire debate and, and, and conversation about that, but it just boils down to like th these boys have been hooping for so very long. I can't say that that's the reason Lonzo Ball got injured, obviously, but it's just unfortunate. And um, I, I don't, I don't know, bro. Because again, I'm a parent, right? So I always try to think about it from a parent's perspective. If my boy told me or my girl told me they wanted to run or play AAU, how would I feel about it? I can't say, nah, you good? Like, like no, we want to save those legs until you're 20, knowing that the even if they play AAU, don't mean that they're gonna make it to the league. So it's like. I don't even know what to stand on it just yet. I played AAU when I was a kid. Now, I wasn't this intense. I wasn't on the high levels like Lonzo Ball and those type of dudes. But I played in my fair share of tournaments, and it was like that. Also, wasn't playing the full games like some of these dudes we playing. Um, we also didn't have mixtapes when we were 9 years old. Because I played from 10 years old to 12. So, we didn't have mixtapes back then. But I do have a team picture. Um, and I don't know where any of them dudes are nowadays. Not a single one of them. I can tell you what one of them is doing. Uh, but I hope they're doing fine. A couple quick hitters. I do want to say I'm loving what I've been seeing from Jabari Smith Jr. over the last couple weeks. The energy is like that. You know what I'm saying? He hit the game winner. He, he's talking to the camera. He's talking to people. I, I love somebody that can get emotional moments like that. Because if you look at the way his career has been up to this point, it's been underwhelming for sure. But in the last couple weeks, he's looking like the guy that they drafted third overall. And I'm loving that it's coming around for him. Oh my God. With the 76ers win today. Oh, he just updated. The 76ers are the two seed now. Look at that. Joel Embiid on an absolute tear. I'm just saying, bro. We made the video about the MVP race earlier this week. I ain't going to make another one. But but I'm t it's about as close as it's ever been in my lifetime. And I'm loving it. Joel Embiid is out there killing. He said in his interview today that he could play make more. But that's just not his role. Which makes sense. Obviously, he, he ain't going to be on the Jokic level. Less. Come on, man. But like... It makes sense. I, th I would say his playmaking has gotten dramatically better throughout the course of his career. Something we talked about about a year and a half ago, where he seems to throwing these doubles and he had the the, the wherewithal, is that the word? And to make the right pass and stuff like that. And people, I saw people tweet the clip of him getting double teamed the other day and he threw it behind the rim or whatever. He has become a plus playmaker, um, but it's just not part of his role right now. So I, I, I cannot believe that they took the two seed. I mean, the Boston Celtics have been kind of existing for like a couple weeks now. Let's be real. Um, they're 5-5 five and five in their last 10. And I want to look at where they at since the All-Star break. Because I think, you know what I'm saying, Tatum came out the gate after the All-Star break and he was struggling. Since the All-Star break, they are 7-6. and six. Is that right? That makes sense? Yeah, that makes sense. They're 7-6 and six, their All-Star break, which is um, slightly above 500. That's not very good. And in some of those games, we're talking about 20-point blown here, 20-point blown there. I turned off this game against the Jazz today, thinking that they had it wrapped up. They were up about, what, 7 with 2 minutes to go? And listen, it's basketball. I should know better. But, like, I turned it off because there's Celtics and it's the Jazz. The Jazz are missing this player here, here, here. Shout out to Chris Dunn. Happy to see him back in the association. I turned it off. And they got a notification. Clutch block. Walker Kessler. And they lost. The, the Celtics lost the game. And right now, they're, they're looking league average in a lot of the stuff since the All-Star break. And some people are saying, oh, they're just bored. They're going to cut it back on come playoff time. But I, I just hate that idea. I hear, I hear it all the time about, like, good, very good teams when they start to slump. Oh, they just bored. They'll be all right. And, yeah, in some cases, you're right. You know what I'm saying? Every team goes through the ups and downs of the season. But, like, at what point do we stop looking at somebody going through a down and say, this is something to be concerned about? I, I don't I don't know. I'm not saying to be concerned about the, the, uh, the Boston Celtics either. I'm just saying... For some people, it should be worrisome, and some people, maybe not so much. I didn't realize it was that bad. And I actually don't even know if this accounts for tonight's game. They might be 7-7 seven and seven since the All-Star break, which would be literally 500. So, um, yeah, something to just watch closely. Just watch very closely. 
um because well the 70 to 76 is whoever whoever ends up getting the two seed I cannot say. I mean, I guess it don't matter too, too much. But whoever has a two seed, once these two teams go against each other in the second round, it's going to have that, that game seven if it goes to there. And I think that's kind of a big thing. You know, I think it's kind of a big thing to have that game seven in your home spot. Because um, I'm I'm saying that they're going to make it, right? Both of those teams are going to make it to the conference finals. They're another team that's going to take that away. That's under that. You know what I'm saying? Because the two seed going to go against the playing team. I trust the 76ers and Celtics versus all the play-in teams right now. And then the three seed is going to go against the six seed, who as of right now is the Brooklyn Nets. I trust whoever the two to three seed is. So those two teams probably going to go against each other in the seven-game series. And whoever ends up as the two seed is going to have that game seven at home. And the Bucs said, show, uh, showed us last year that you do want that game seven at home, man. You do want that game seven at home. So, uh, yeah, it's important. All right, so enough talking. Uh, I'm going to try to be better. I, I keep saying that, but I'm, I mean it this time around. We're just going to be chatting about hoops. And some of it gonna be rumbling, uh, rambling. Most of it's gonna be rambling, but it is what it is.